Hello again. Today we will perform a oil change on a Jaguar F-Type R and attempt to use an oil extractor just to see how much oil is actually left over after extracting. The F-Type has a tube in the oil fill that supposedly connects directly to the oil extractor and should remove a lot of the oil. I try to change my oil every year or 6,000 miles, whichever comes first. To begin, make sure that you have all the necessary materials. Please look at the description for a complete list. You'll need at least 7 liters of 0W20 engine oil. A specialty oil with specific additives is advised, and I'm using Liquid Molly that's specifically designed for Land Rovers and Jaguars. I actually picked up two 5 liter bottles just to have some extra. You'll also need a oil filter and a new O-ring. Consider using a man or mall filter, but I'm using the genuine filter, which costs about the same. You might need a 90mm oil filter socket, which will help to get the oil filter out. Luckily I was able to get mine off with my hands. You'll also need a new drain plug, and you'll likely need an oil catcher and some rags or paper towels. Alright, let's get started. The only real prep you need to do is let the engine warm up for about 10 minutes, and this will let the oil get a little bit less viscous. First things first, let's try using the oil extractor. The tube that comes with it actually fits directly onto the little spout in the oil reservoir, so you can attach it and start pumping out the oil, and you should see oil coming out. This is as much oil as I can get out. I think every line on the extractor is about one liter, and so it's a little bit over five liters, I think? But that's about it. Now you just need to loosen the oil filter cap. I almost couldn't get it with my bare hands, and so you probably need to pick up a 90 millimeter socket for this. But take it off so the o-ring is exposed and let it sit for 10 minutes to drain any remaining oil. Now to drain the oil the normal way, which is from underneath, so Next step is to raise the car up, or if you have ramps that level the car, you can park it on ramps. I have these quick jacks that are actually really, really, really handy. Uh, they're about $1,300, $1,400, but man, are they helpful. Like with most cars, you'll need to remove a uh, undercarriage shield. This leaf is probably sapping my performance. There are a few bolts here that you need to remove, but they're all 10 millimeter, so get your 10 millimeter socket and remove them all. Once you have them all removed and put in a safe place, the undercarriage shield will just pop out. There's some pieces on the sides that are wind deflectors in the wheel well, but these will bend out of the way. Just make sure you reinstall them so that they're not rubbing on any steering components. Now for the moment of truth, we should have barely any oil coming out the bottom since we used the oil extractor. As you can see, that is not the case. I was expecting less than a, at least less than a liter, but it just kept filling and filling, and so I ended up having to kind of bail into the oil catcher. And yeah, that oil is pretty hot, but luckily it had some time to cool off, and so it wasn't didn't end up burning me. Also, get a look at the oil color. It really doesn't look like the suggested oil that you're supposed to put in. But to be fair, I bought this car used from a non-Jaguar dealer, so maybe they ended up just putting in like basic crude oil instead of the recommended one. So let's see exactly how many liters of oil were left in after the extractor. It ended up being about 1.8 liters, almost 2 pints, which is uh, pretty significant. I, I guess I'll be changing my oil the regular way from now on. But now that we actually got all the oil out, it's been at least 10 minutes so we can take the filter off. And here's the old filter. You can see after you remove the filter, it just clips on at the very bottom here. So you just switch out the filter and don't forget to switch out the o-ring as well. As you can see, there's some of that nasty oil left over where the filter goes and so I'm going to sop it up with a paper towel. After I get some of that oil, make sure to rub the oil on the o-ring, otherwise it's going to be very difficult to thread back in, it's just going to bind up too much. I'm going to just hand tighten this, you can see it's all the way down and then just hand tighten it a little bit. Now you can put in a new drain plug and reattach the 
undercarriage shield. I should be done from underneath the car, so I'm going to lower the car back down to normal height. And now you can fill the engine back with oil. Uh, this specific car is a V8 and all-wheel drive, so it needs six and a half liters, but make sure to check your specific car so that you know exactly how much to put in. Now to check the oil, you have to leave the hood open and this has to be 10 minutes after the engine was switched off. Next, turn the battery on, but not actually the engine. And then navigate to the vehicle information and you should be able to see the oil level and hopefully it'll say OK. The manual actually says to press the cruise control cancel button twice within two seconds of getting on this screen, but I, I don't know, it kind of says OK anyway, so that's good. And that's it. I really don't think I'll be using the extractor uh, for an entire oil change. Maybe I'm not supposed to use the extractor port and should just use the extension tubes that come with the extractor, but if you have a way to get the last two liters out, let me know. I make Range Rover and Jaguar repair videos, and so don't forget to subscribe if you don't want to miss any simple fixes that will definitely save you thousands over taking it to the dealer. Thank you and have a good one.